You're listening to In The Now on the Radio Random Network. Thanks for hitting the download button. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Get a 30-day free trial and download a free audiobook to any smart device by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash RRN online. Racket sound lighting and DJ services. For big production on a musician's budget, contact Bob Tolar at 225-773-4639 and by amazon.com. When you visit rrnonline.com and shop with Amazon through the links on the website, they give money back to us to help with production costs and bandwidth. Thank you for all the support and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Nick West and you are listening to In The Now. On In The Now, right now, joining me on the Radio Random Network is our first interview of 2015 with none other than super musician, Miss Nick West. Miss Nick, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Awesome. We're doing awesome down here. It's an honor to talk with you. How was your New Year's? My New Year's was great, actually. I spent it in Seattle, and I watched the fireworks on the... um. Space Needle, so that was, it was really cool. Now, before we get started, I was contacted by one of your fans from Argentina, who has a birthday. I think her name is Yuma. She wants to know if you can give her a shout-out really quick. So if you can give a shout-out to Yuma for a birthday, we'd certainly appreciate it. Of course. Hey, Yuma, I just want to say happy birthday from Nick West. Really appreciate you guys being fans. I love it. Have a great one. With that said, Nick, does it surprise you that even though, uh, you know, you're pretty much an independent artist, but uh, without that huge record company or that huge marketing machine behind you that your music is known on a worldwide level? Um, Yeah, actually, <laughs> I never set out to do music professionally or be a superstar and it, it just kind of amazes me every day how far everything has gone and not on purpose <laughs> well, well well with that said was music always a, a part of your life or, or was it something that you just kind of come into music was a part of my life because my dad he, he was um played guitar so he played in the gospel industry and things like that so of course when we were little me and my sisters he would put us on instruments or teach us how to sing and so it was always in our lives. I just never thought that I would do it professionally. I was more into, I was more of the, the nerd into going to school and being an engineer and running tracks. So I, I never thought of um, doing music on purpose. <laughs> well, where, where, where do you get your inspiration from uh, as far as your uh, lyrics and everything? Where, where does the inspiration for your lyrics come from for your songs? My inspiration really comes from just life experiences. And I have a friend, he, he's actually a producer, and he writes a lot of songs based off of his life experiences as well. And we kind of just collaborate on a lot of the songs that we put together for my solo stuff. So, yeah, really life. <laughs> and you talk about your solo stuff. You, you've played uh, amongst many, many, many uh, well known uh, world renowned uh, musicians what is one of the character traits of yours that that can be accredited to the way you were raised I think just uh, musically just the discipline because I was involved my dad wouldn't let us play video games and things like that we were well disciplined into you know being in our studies or being into whatever it was that we decided to do to do it fully and do it you know consistently and and practice it and just be a hundred percent in on whatever whatever it was we decided to do. Um, definitely, that's that's one of the characteristics that I have with my music. As far as like my moral standards and things that I will not do, and lots lots of things I do say no to because of my moral compass. So, a lot of what I do and what I don't do, as far as the music industry is concerned, can definitely be taken from how I was raised. You said music was always a part of the household and everything, but where did it really start as far as like the musicianship? Uh, where, where, did, where does that come into play with your life? When, when did you decide that this is something that you wanted to do professionally? Um, I Well, I was 16, and that's that's actually when I decided I wanted to play bass. I heard Michael Jackson, do you want to be starting something? My dad came and picked us up from school, and I was wondering what that instrument that was driving the whole song, you know, and he said, that's a bass guitar. And I'm like, well, I don't want to play guitar anymore. Put me on the bass. <laughs> so 
So yeah, it was, when I was 16, I decided I wanted to play bass. Professionally, I decided because I, I had modeling career and everything. I was traveling all over the country doing runway shows and stuff like that. And a friend of mine that I'd known since I was 12 years old said, yo, I mean, I know you're beautiful and all, but I remember you, you used to really play the bass and you were really good at it. If you pick it up again and start doing it 100%, I think you could really go far. So that day, I actually dusted off my bass and started playing again. So I think I just got little inspirations along the way that it would be really cool if I played my bass. So your dad was pretty much a big influence on your on your career and your music and, and everything. He he kind of played a big part in, in, in everything, correct? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Now, you've been all over the world with it. I mean, I, I watched a thing on, on YouTube with you in, in Japan. You're a pretty big name over there. I guess so. I... <laughs> <laughs> That's the way. It's I guess so. It was a lot of fun. Now, were you? How how are you? How are you treated? You know, over there um, versus being in the states. I really like Japan because Japan is super clean. Um, the people are really nice. They're really receptive. They love funk music. They love rock music, and they just love. They just love true musicianship, and that's one of the things that I will never forget. I mean, when I first walked into the Blue Note. Uh, uh, one of the people that were kind of handling me and the band and everything said, okay, I just want to let you know that we're at the Blue Note and here, you know, for a lot of the shows, people don't really stand up, you know, if, if the Japanese nod and, and, you know, kind of smile and everything, that means they're really enjoying what you're doing. You won't really find them standing up, jumping, jumping up and down. It's kind of it's a little different than how it is in America for concerts at the Blue Note. And so I said, okay. You know, it was so crazy. By the end of the night, everyone was standing up. We had people on stage. We had people break dancing. So it was really, really amazing how this kind of music really moved people all over the world. Yeah, you, you kind of taught them a new way. I, I was watching, again, I was watching the uh, the YouTube video that can be found on your uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, Nick West Bass on YouTube. Just If you're listening, just type that in. You can check out all kind of good videos that Nick has up. But, um, you know, you were saying they were sitting there. They were, you were right. They were standing up. They were dancing. You kind of taught them a new way, pretty much. I heard you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was an awesome. Yeah, was it was a awesome. lot of fun. You, so, you, I mean, your music, everything, I mean, it, it's accepted worldwide. And, and you have a lot of feeling and energy on stage now. Where does that energy come from? I mean, are you feeding off the crowd, or, or is it something that just comes natural to you? You know, I was, when I was seven years old, I was, they tried to diagnose me with attention deficit disorder. Well, I had a lot of energy. I always had a lot of energy. Um, and so my mom was like, you're not medicating my child. What we're going to do is we're going to just give her more homework. We're going to give her more to do. So I think just all that energy that I'm not able to use when I'm, say, in a study situation, I can't be loud and rambunctious and jump up and down and stuff. I utilize it on the stage. In the beginning, when I first started my career, I was a little timid because, of course, you're always taught me. I'm always taught, okay, all that wild stuff that you do, you 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 can't do that here. You need to chill out. You need to calm down, sit down somewhere. <laughs> and so my sister told me, she said, okay, Nate, you know how you're always running around the house doing flips, doing hand, handstands and back bends and all that stuff. Why don't you do that on stage? Why don't you just be 100% you? on stage and the moment she told me that that's when I said okay they want me I'm gonna give them me and that's where all the energy comes from it, it's really natural now, I've been holding back for years <laughs> now you you were talking about you know you were you were being you as a kid you were diagnosed with the uh, attention deficit disorder I mean you couldn't stay still and everything else do you find that I mean a lot of musicians they all have that trait uh, especially a lot of the good ones. Um, I guess it's because, do you think it's because of the, uh, you know, with music, music is so challenging sometimes. Uh, well, all the time, really. Do you, somebody that's ADD, do you feel like they they make a better entertainer? I guess is the best word, best way to put it. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think so. It's, it's really crazy that you ask. Um, and I don't know that this person has ADD, but um, I was saying, because I don't really watch TV. I'm really just kind of into my music and, like running around and flipping and just kind of doing the thing. I'm just really high energy type of person. I was talking to Prince probably uh, back in August, and I was telling him kind of how I am. I'm like, yeah, I don't watch TV. He's like, well, have you heard this song? I'm like, yeah, I don't really listen to music. I just, I'm just doing my own thing. And he said, you know what? You are a lot like me when I was your age. 
You know, when I was in my 20s, I had a lot of energy. I didn't really listen to other music or watch a lot of TV. I was just kind of into, in my head a lot. Always in my head and doing a lot of just, just high energy things. So I think that maybe there is something to this quote ADD thing and musicians. <laughs> I, w- I would put my check that that Prince is probably ADD. I, I would say he is. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a it, number one. He's a musician. He's a musical genius. I mean, the guy. I mean, the stuff that he's came. Uh, you know, over the years, the things that he's come up with and and everything that he's done. I mean, it's phenomenal. Definitely. Now, how long was yeah. it until you got Prince's attention? Because I mean, with your characteristics and everything. I mean, it, it, I, I mean, and I also read reviews and everything. It it only took a little while for you to get his attention. Correct. I, you know, I was playing with, I had a uh, drummer in my band. Her name was Hannah Ford. She, we did something for the drum channel. This was back in 2011. We did something for the drum channel. My album had just, first album had just come out. And we played a song called Let's Work by Prince. And he saw this video. And from that moment, that was when he discovered Hannah and discovered me and it's just discovered who we were. And now Hannah is a part of his band, Third Eye Girl. And a year later, well, from what Hannah tells me that he'd been asking about me for a year. So what's Nick West doing? You think she'd want to come jam? You think Nick would want to come hang out? And I'm like, Hannah, I can't believe this because you know that Prince is, was like my idol. Of course I'd want to come hang out with him. And he's asking, hey, do you think she'd be interested? <laughs> so it was it was really kind of a, a cool thing that he found out about me a year before I actually met him. We met, we jammed, you know, talked about a lot of cool things, played some ping pong, and then, you know, we've had, kind of had a cool um, uh, relationship ever since. So, yeah, 2012 was when I met him the first time. You played ping pong with him? Yes. <laughs> really good. Now, is that one of, a, is that one of your... Um... I mean, is that something that, uh, is that one of y'all's pastimes? Uh, I guess downtime, is that something he likes to do for fun as well as you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. If we're in between rehearsals or um, just, you know, on a break, he's like, hey, let's go play ping pong. So everybody that comes to Paisley Park and stays for a while or is a part of Prince's band gets really good at three different things. Number one, music, of course. Number two, ping pong. And number three, dancing. I mean, your game just steps up on all three of those things. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, being at Paisley Park, now, what was that experience like? Well, the first time I went, I was terrified. <laughs> yes, indeed. I was terrified because, yeah, I was terrified because, I mean, P- Paisley Park is it's huge. So, I mean, you just go through the inside and look at everything and all the studios and stuff, and it, and it can be overwhelming at first. Um it was, for me, first time overwhelming. The next time, you know, the next couple of times, it was it was like, okay, this is cool. You know, I can get used to this. I mean, it always smells really good. He's always got really great paintings and artwork and everything going on in there. And, and he makes you feel really comfortable. Prince makes you feel really comfortable. He wants you to just be who you are. And that's one of the things I really value about him, being around him. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a short pause and pay a bill, and we'll be right back with the one and only Nick West. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Audible, the leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audio books whenever and whatever you want. Get a free audio book when you sign up for a free trial at www.audibletrial.com or RN Live. Pick out a free audio book with over 150,000 titles to choose from, from major authors to New York Times bestsellers. That's audibletrial.com forward slash RRN live. I'm sitting here with the one and only Nick West. You can find more out about Nick by visiting www.nickwestbase.com and that's N I K W S T base.com. As we, well, let's talk a little bit about the Queen of, it's a competition that you founded and January 15th. Yeah will be the uh, the launch of the very first competition. Can you tell us a little bit about the concept behind the competition? Okay, it's actually January 22nd. It would be the, the launch of the competition. And the competition is to just bring notoriety and just to bring awareness to all of the female bassists and guitarists around the world. Because there's so many really great ones, and the world doesn't know about it. I think the world maybe knows about a handful, 
a few years ago when I started playing music, I knew about two female bassists, and that was Esperanza Spalding, Rhonda Smith. You know, it was later on that I found out about everyone else that was awesome at playing the bass and playing the guitar. But, I mean, it's 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 kind of a a hidden club, I guess. It was always like a hidden club for me. So every time I found a new one, I was like, oh, my gosh, she's amazing. And that inspired me to be even better. So I think by doing this competition, it brings a lot of those maybe closet players or players that just try to stay in their basement, or maybe they play live, it kind of brings them out to the forefront so that we can all see who they are. Yes, indeed. Now, you're also going to be one of the judges, along with uh, super musicians such as uh, Rhonda Smith, who you just mentioned, Jennifer Batten, Kate Dyson, Andy Clemens, just to name a few. But uh, can you give us a little insight on on what you would be uh, expecting from uh, the competitors or, or the contestants? Yes, and uh, actually one of the judges, uh, Orianti, she's also a judge for the competition, um, who played with Michael Jackson as well as uh, Jennifer Batten. Now, what we're looking for is just uh, three things. Of course, great musicianship. Uh, we want to know your story. Like We want to know where you are, where you came from, how you got inspired to play this instrument. And three, we want to see what your feel is like on your instrument because you know, there's a lot of people that they're amazing technically, but their feel is not there. And then there's a lot of people who I would say kind of like me starting, I didn't have the best technical skills. I wasn't the best at chop, but I had feel for days. Like if you wanted a baseline and you wanted a groove and you wanted to really feel it, I was, a, I was a girl for the job. So I think just, just based off of those three things, we, are just looking for girls that are really inspired to, to do their thing and really inspired to help other other musicians come up as well. Yes, indeed. Now, are, how is the response going as far? I mean, I know you got some super sponsors, but the, the, as far as getting the word out and everything, everything's going great with that, right? Yes, and so far we have, gosh, I think close to a 1,000 subscribers for the competition, female subscribers for the competition. So on the 22nd, they're actually able to upload the videos for um, onto the website at www.queenofstrings.com. So, yeah, we've got some really cool prizes, really cool sponsors, and I really cannot wait to see these videos. Yes, indeed. And, and I, I can't wait neither myself. I mean, this is just... It, 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 by by connecting with you, connecting with you, uh, with your publicists and everything, I mean it's opened a whole new world for myself. Not only as a musician, but also as as a music lover. I mean, uh, and it's amazing how you are uh, behind and and really try to um, I guess like you said get the closet players to come out, especially on on the female side of it, because for so many years, you know, the music world was kind of I guess a male dominant thing i don't want to sound oh, like yeah. a uh uh you know a sexist or anything because i am not i'm a fan of all music but um you have any inspiring words for any uh female young female musicians that um you know maybe want to follow in nick west's footsteps i think just sticking to it and practicing i think the difference a lot of times between uh males and females is males are a lot more competitive so if they see one guy playing some really crazy technical thing, he, this guy is going to learn how to play that really crazy technical thing and learn how to play it even better. And that's the thing. And that's that's what I think made me better, is seeing other female musicians, seeing other girls that look like me and wanting to set my game up even more. So I would say don't quit. Don't, don't try to compare yourself to the guys because, Honestly, in this industry, you have to be twice as good to be thought of half as good as a guy. So I wouldn't even compare yourself to the guys. Just every day work on being the best that you can be and be you and do you because somebody's going to take notice. The minute I started to be me 100%, my full energy, my crazy hair, all of that, and, and I stopped trying to compete with others and stopped trying to be and look like others, that's when everything took off for me. So I would say be you, work on your craft, and just own it. 
Yes, indeed. Now, the competition is broken down into two categories, Queen of Strings bass and Queen of Strings guitar, but you're also talking about adding more to next year's lineup, um, violin and ukulele. Now, are those two um, instruments something that that maybe you, you play yourself, or is it just something that you're just trying to add to the competition? Is this something that I would like to add to the competition? Because when you think of the, the term strings, it's, it's like, okay, we've got to include other stringed instruments because guitar and bass, they aren't the only instruments that are strings. And there are a lot of women that said, oh, my gosh, I play the violin. That has strings. Can I be a part of it? And, oh, we play the ukulele. And lots, <laughs> lots of young girls, I mean, even under the age of 13. And we were thinking about also creating an under-13 category as well for next year. So there's a lot of... Um, inquiries about violin and ukulele so we decided we'll probably add that next year as well yes indeed now you said something about your 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 hair and everything now your image i'm sure it's very important to you but now you know i've seen the the pictures and your hair is shaped like a uh, a base base cliff in which that, it is. <laughs> that is that is very unique now now how long does it take you to to get your hair do up like that i mean is that something that you do yourself or you have people do it for you or well, I generally have people do it for me, but I've been doing it for a while now, and I've been watching the stylists do it for a while now to where if I get in the crunch, I'm able to do it myself now. Mm-hmm. I'm not a really big uh, hair person because I have naturally curly hair, so it just does its own thing normally. <laughs> yes, indeed. So I never really had to comb or, or do my own hair. But I've been watching and paying attention, and I'm actually able to do the mohawks myself now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all part of the indeed. image, the whole bass club thing. Yeah. Yeah, you can find out more about Queen of Strings, as Nick said. You can even sponsor or be a partner, and you can subscribe to the network by visiting queenofstrings.com. I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to take a short pause. We're going to talk about some sponsors of the Radio Random Network. And in the now, when we come back, we'll talk to Nick about her music. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, we want to send a shout out to one of our great local sponsors, Racket Sound Lighting and DJ Services. For big production on a musician's budget, contact Bob Tolar at 225-773-4639. That's 225-773-4639. You know, there's many ways to support the Radio Random Network. One way to support the Radio Random Network is by visiting www.rrnonline.com and shopping with Amazon through the links provided on our website. When you shop with Amazon through the links on the website, they kick us back a little money, no cost to you, and that helps pay for bandwidth, updating our equipment, and it also helps with production calls. So the next time you go to shop with Amazon, visit rrnonline.com and use our Amazon links provided. Now, I'm on the line with the founder of the Queen of Strings competition and super musician, Nick West. Now, let's talk a little bit about your music, your second album, Say Something. You know, you take a little from all of your musical influences and you mix it all up together, making the album a a bit unique in a good way. Now, I felt after listening to a, a few tracks off of it, such as you, and that's one of my favorite tracks, off of the album that I guess I think it was produced by Mr. Paris Toon, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But yes. in this album, were you were you able to be? Uh, well, I feel that you were able to, I guess, be more yourself. Um, but oh yeah. But what were some of the challenges you faced? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the highs and lows of of making uh, say something compared to the uh, other? Yeah, albums? yeah, yeah. So I, when I did my first album, I wasn't sure that I wanted to sing at all. So I just wanted to play the bass, and a few very well-known musicians said, no, if you sing, you can go a lot further than just playing the bass. So went into the studio, the producer said, okay, we're going to try this song. It's called Black Beauty. You write it. I'll help write a couple of lyrics as well, and I just want you to try this. Tried it. We liked it. So I decided I'm going to sing for the rest of the album. (laughs) (laughs) So that was the first album, and... It was kind of like, you know, I had a producer that I was working with that would, we would come up with the songs and the music and everything together. I would have a bass line. He would come up with some keyboard parts. And it kind of was this neo-soul, soul soul funk type vibe going on in the first album. And then I later discovered who I really wanted to be, who I was, 
what I like. Just, just, I love folk music, but then I also have a knack for rock music. The only thing that drew me back was, okay, I'm a black girl singing rock in today's industry. I don't know how that would go. I don't know if I want to do that because I'm not sure how that's going to go. Well, Dave Stewart of Eurythmics, who actually, you know, was the person that gave me my very first gig, he told me, he said, no, you got to think about it. You could be like a female Lenny Kravitz. Remember who Betty Davis was. Betty Davis, I mean, she sang funk, but she had this rock, raspy voice. I mean, you've got, a, you've got a Janis Joplin thing going on with your voice. So and I think you'd be perfect if you did rock. So, you know, later on I went and I recorded Back in Black, the very first rock song I did, and people absolutely went crazy. Like, they loved it. And I said, okay, that's what I should be doing, mixing my, my soul funk roots with some of this rock. And that's kind of how Say Something came about. It was kind of a, all right, do we like this feel? Do we like this sound? Okay, well, maybe, so we'll put it on there. Do we like this? And the very last two songs were, yes, I definitely love the rock, definitely love where we're going with this, but we decided to use some of the songs along the way that we've recorded. So definitely a, a hodgepodge of my whole growth in that time period from the first album to this one. Yes, indeed. Now, do you see releasing Say Something as, as a milestone in your career? Oh, definitely. Definitely, because people kind of want to know at this point, well, who exactly is Nick West? We've heard Just in the Nick of Time, which has got a soul, neo-soul vibe to it. And then we've seen and we've heard of Do Back in Black labels like Sony. Hey, we love it. She's like the female Lenny Kravitz. Now, who is she right now? And I think Say Something really just, like, hands it to them, hands it to everyone, shows them exactly exactly who I am inside. Yes, indeed. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to mix it up a little bit on you. Uh, this is going to be a little name association type thing we're going to do, okay? I'm going to okay. call out some names, and all, you just give me the first, uh, the first thing that comes to mind. The first thought that comes to mind when I mention a name, you just lay it out there if you don't mind. All right. One word or... Uh, <laughs> you can go into detail if you'd like. Um, just uh, I'm just going to mention okay. the name. Uh, first and foremost, John Mayer. Amazing technical musician. Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. Flamboyant ADD, funkadelic Nick West. <laughs> yes, indeed. Dave Stewart. Genius. Marketing genius, musical genius, man of many hats. Prince. Oh, wow. Prince. Uh, genius, mysterious. Uh, anywhere you think he's going, he'll jump, jump up and do something completely opposite. All right. Last but not least, Mr. Mr. Paris Toon. Paris Toon. Gosh, you know what? All these people you're missing are geniuses in their own right. Paris is a genius in his own right as well. I would call him the underground genius. Like the underground, you know, I would say that he's a lot like Prince. He's a lot like Prince, except he doesn't play all the instruments that Prince plays and or sings like Prince sings. But as far as like the way his mind works, how he is with marketing, thought process on writing songs, I think the two are very similar. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes. Now, yeah. what can we expect as fans? What can we expect from you in the new year, 2015? Wow, there's a few things. I actually have a tour coming up, signed with a really, really cool management company, um, doing a lot of stuff in Europe. And I will be actually working on a project with, Mr. Purple and um, a few other, few other people. So I won't disclose too much now, but 2015 is definitely the year that you'll see me on more uh, scales and more programs than you would have expected. Yes, so I, I kind of get my hands dirty in a few different things. Put it that way. <laughs> you are one to, I guess, uh, go. I guess you're pretty known for going out of your element now. I mean, you out of your comfort zone. I mean, is that something that, that you like to do? 
Yeah, you know what? I've discovered now that I don't I don't really have a comfort zone. I think my I think my comfort zone is kind of just being as crazy as possible as far as musically. As as far as music is concerned, just I like everything from country to rock to punk to I just, I just like so many different things and I'm very versatile. You know, I'm one of those uh, musicians I've heard that can, if I'm playing country music, I can play country music and make it sound like I'm a country bassist. <laughs> so I'm very versatile because I listen to a lot of different things and I very eclectic taste. Yes, indeed. Now I know you're all about your music and everything, and we, I got just got a couple of more questions. First and foremost, what, what do you do in your, in your spare time when you're, you know, when you're not into your music? How do you unwind? How do I unwind? Well, I love to work, hang out with my family, but <clears throat> I'm a math geek. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a math geek, so sometimes I will go on YouTube or go on certain blogs and check out, like, the questions that people ask. Sometimes you can go on, like, Google or Yahoo, and people will ask questions. They might have problems with their homework or something. And I'm one of those uh, people that answer the questions. Like, I'm just an anonymous question answerer when it comes to calculus and math. Really? Free time, go on, I see these questions, and I'll answer it, and I'll show them how to work out the problem. Yeah, I have a, bl- I have a blog called Not Your Average Calculus Geek. It started out as something that I was going to just answer calculus questions on, but then, of course, I started putting all my music and photos and everything on there. But if you're ever on my blog, not your average calculus geek, Tumblr dash or Tumblr slash Nick West Base, ask me a calculus question, and I, I just may answer it for you. <laughs> that, that's wild. <laughs> that's something I would have never thought of. So is it is it safe to say that if, if you wasn't an entertainer, if you wasn't a model, that you would be a uh, – a math teacher? Oh, I I probably I would definitely be a math teacher or math professor or some sort of a chemical engineer. It definitely would have something to do with math. All right, Nick. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today and, and taking the time. It's been an honor to sit here and talk to you for the past uh, half hour. And uh, I want to have you back on in, in the next couple of months and see how everything's going, where everything's at. We're going to share all the links. Real quick, though, if, if there's any promoters or, or anybody out there listening that, that would like to book Nick West, is there a certain website or anything they could go to? Yeah, so um, nickwestbase.com. And then if you click contact, all the information is there. So the emails for if you're trying to book for Europe, there's a specific management company that I'm with for Europe and then U.S. and so on and so forth. So just on my website, contact. Yes, indeed. And also, I mean, is there anything else you would like to talk about or anything else that you want to hit on before um, before we before we go? I I think that's it. Oh, I will actually be doing, if, if you guys know who Snarky Puppy, Snarky Puppy is a really – Really well known, becoming a very very well known um, band, instrumental band. And for the Nam show, I'll be doing some session work for Snarky Puppy and Universal Audio, which which is really an honor for me. And I'm actually not going to be playing bass; I'm going to be playing guitar and singing. So that's going to be kind of interesting for my fans to see. And the Now is a proud member of the Radio Random Network. And if you would like to support the Radio Random Network, it's very easy and appreciated. By supporting, you're helping us pay for new equipment, bandwidth, and monthly fees to syndicated services. You can support by rating the Radio Random Network on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. That helps with the algorithms and helps the Radio Random Network reach more listeners. You can donate monetarily on PayPal by just clicking the Donate button in the top right corner at rrnonline.com. There's no set price. You can donate any amount. We will give you a shout-out on the show for supporting. You can shop with our sponsors, such as audibletrial.com forward slash 
RRN online. You will receive a 30 day free trial and a free audio book download by doing so. You can also shop at Amazon by using the links provided at RRNonline.com. When you shop with Amazon using our links, they kick back a little money to us, no cost to you. You can also sign up as an official sponsor of the Radio Random Network for a low monthly fee by contacting us and requesting a sponsorship. The email address is info at RRNonline.com. Again, any help is very appreciated, and by supporting, it helps keep the Radio Random Network podcast free for all of our listeners. Thank you so much for listening, and crank it up.